Hello, welcome to Literary Life. So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you my literary journey, which was on thrillers and dangerous beginnings. All of these characters in the books are embarking on a new journey, and it's just not going so well. Um, as always, I will have links below to the books if you're interested in purchasing them. The way my reviews work is I give every book one to five stars. One star, I did not like the book, probably didn't even finish reading it. Two stars, eh, the book was okay. Three stars, it was a good book. I liked it. Four stars, it was a great book. I loved it. And five stars are those random books that just blow my mind. And I do want everyone to read them <laughs> so we can talk about them. All right, so let's get started. This was a pretty diverse literary journey for me. Um, the first book I'm going to talk about is Violet by Scott Thomas. Now, I read Kill Creek by Scott Thomas, and I'm pretty sure I really liked it. Okay, I just had to look it up and I did give it three stars. So I thought Kill Creek was a good book. Um, Violet, on the other hand, was more of a meh for me. I gave it two stars. I found this book incredibly frustrating and I'll explain to you why in a second. Um, essentially, this book follows our main character who hasn't been back to... Um, a place where she grew up at this lake. They had a summer house that her family, her and her parents would go to. I want to say it's been around 30 years. Um, she is now an adult. She is a single mother. She has her own daughter. And um, her father has recently passed away. And now she has decided to take the opportunity to essentially, um, she just lost her husband as well, to take her daughter and go and stay at the old lake house that she hasn't been to in a significantly long period of time. Um, her and her daughter arrive for the summer and there is a um, ghostly presence is how I'll describe it of another young girl that it sounds like our main character, no spoilers, this is all in the description. Um, my reviews always are spoiler free just to let you know if you're new to the channel. But the um, we know our main character has some form of a history with this entity and now her daughter is getting exposed to it as well. Um, I struggled with this book a lot, guys. I found it very irritating, like right out of the gate, because there was so much to me that just did not make sense. And by make sense, I'm like, this isn't logical. Um, first of all, you know, our main character is allowed to view her husband's body at the morgue, and it's in horrendous, his body is in horrendous condition. I, I just didn't see that unfolding um, in the real world that way. And then it just kind of continued. Um, I was baffled by the condition of the lake house when our main character arrived, how the realtor would not have just come out and said to her, like, look, your, your father canceled maintenance on this ages ago. Um, why he kind of brought that up when she had finally ar 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 arrived I don't even know how to say it, but there was just so much like that, that it almost seems like we were being forced down a path um, just to get the story to unfold. And it just didn't feel well developed to me. Um, so this one was a two star. Now, I would say if you read Kill Qu a Creek <laughs> and you loved it, um, you or you're just a real sucker for ghost thrillers and you want to read them all or what I'm describing is one of those things you're like, yeah, I'm good with that. I can deal with that as long as the ghost element is scary. There are elements to this that were very engaging. Um, it just to me felt forced a lot of times, even in the language, it felt like gruesome words were just kind of put in there to really make the story like pow feel more impactful. Um, it, it just wasn't my cup of tea for a thriller or cocktail <laughs> for a thriller. <laughs> Feels like a cocktail should go with a thriller more than a cup of tea. All right. So now let's go on to the next book. This one, you guys, I, I have been sitting here trying to get ready to read this book. And I wasn't. I still wasn't ready <laughs> for House of Leaves. I struggled to even rate this one. Um, and I settled on three stars because... I couldn't, I, I, I literally couldn't go to either extreme toward either side. 
I as much hated this book as my mind was blown from it. And when I say hated it, like hated the reading, wanted to DNF it so many times. For those of you not familiar with House of Leaves, this is a cult classic. Um, essentially, at some point, I don't know if it was in the 1990s, um, but the book started to just be a manuscript, paper, just sort of underground, hand-to-hand, -hand, passed around and shared, um, and started to get a lot of buzz. And at some point, I don't know exactly how I would be interested in the full story, the book came um, on the radar of a publication company, and I think it's under Random House, but it's a, a smaller publishing house that went ahead and published this book in the early 2000s. Um, this book is about a family who buys a home in Virginia and finds that the home on the inside is not just much larger than it should be given the outside of the home, but also is malleable or evolving. The home changes. And essentially, the family is going to embark on this journey to try to understand what's going on, um, while also coping with some of their own personal demons, interrelational issues between the husband and wife, and um, just so much is there. What is crazy about this book, though, and I just have to show you guys, it is presented... Um, in so many bizarre ways. Like, you have a bunch of text, but then you can see here the orientation of the book will start to change. Some pages will have very little text. I mean, so as you're reading the book, it is, it, it's just bizarre. It feels, I know it's purposeful, and I know it's supposed to make you feel either agoraphobic or claustrophobic. I've seen the words apply to it to kind of describe the sensation of going through the house. The other thing I really struggle with is there are multiple stories happening. You have the main story and some of this family and their experience of the house. And sometimes that main story is written as like a descriptive, um, I think it's third or first person narrative. Then all of a sudden, it'll take a tone as if it's like a research paper about the family and it'll go into their background. So the tone changes from being your typical fiction, sort of descriptive, which I really enjoyed, to a sort of an educational, research-oriented um, exploration of the family, interpretations of their behavior by various scholars that are cited and footnoted throughout the book. I found that one less enjoyable. Then there was a completely separate story going on. And you would track this by the change of the font. Um, here is an example here just to kind of show you guys. This here is the main story that I just described. But as I would get down here, and you can see this is always a first person narrative. This is another person um, and their story. And their story is very loosely connected um, I think it's through, they've been, they're a person that has been exposed to the manuscript and reading it, but you're kind of going down this road of this person's, this, it's a male, um, his drama, his, he's a tattoo artist, um, he's got this affinity for this particular stripper, it's like its own complete side story, and he's sort of descending into madness, and then on top of that, um, you have all these other footnotes that are just citing research articles or citing the history of, I, I don't even know, like it will just be things like, bizarre guys, um, boredom, self, and culture. Like it'll be literally the psychology of boredom and then it'll talk about that. And I got to the point as I'm reading the book where I'm like, I, I just, I decided I wasn't enjoying that other character, the tattoo artist story at all, which I would have thought I would have loved, but it just felt like a secondary story and it, it didn't seem to be adding. And I'm like, the only way I'm going to get through this is to hyper focus on the main story and just ignore everything else. And that actually helped me. So like the first third of the book, I tried it as it was. The second third of the book, I hyper focused on my main story. I was so exhausted, you guys. I didn't even finish the last third of the book. Like I skimmed it and then I just stopped. I literally was fried. I don't know how to rate that. Like this book put me through such a unique experience. There's this part of me that's like, I can't 
one star to star it because there is something odd and unique here. I, I'm not sure. <laughs> This is, I know more of you have read this book, and I would love to hear your experiences below. I, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this one. I don't know if I'd ever recommend it to somebody. I feel like this is for people that are high, hardcore, experienced. Like, I, I like reading experiences. I want to sample everything. Then, yes, you need to put this book on your radar because you are never going to have a literary experience like this book. I think that's the best way I can summate, summate it, summarize it. I can't even talk. This book, that's how traumatized I am by reading this book. All right, let's get into a four star read. You guys told me to read this. One of you told me to read this, and I loved it. This was a Some Choose Darkness by Charlie Donnelly. I had just read um, the second book he wrote on these this main character in this book, we have a forensic reconstructionist, Rory Moore. She is on the spectrum. She's very much like a high functioning autism, um, brilliant, brilliant woman. And I love the way her neurodiversity is captured and reflected and it's used as part of her character's quirks yet strengths. It's so beautifully done. Um, she is essentially very talented because of her neurodiversity. It, looking at evidence, looking at a series of events, reading testimony, going through everything that's been gathered on cold cases and understanding what happened because the way her brain just connects the dots on things, she can catch things that other people miss. It's awesome. Um, essentially, her father has a law office. Um, Rory, our main character, does have her law degree, but has never practiced, doesn't really enjoy like any of the actual real day-to-day -day activities of being an attorney, so has never pursued it. Um, but she has been on her father's law firm um, and basically would help out with an investigation detail here and there as needed. Unfortunately, her father has passed away. She is now cleaning out his office and um, she gets pulled in through that to a very old case where um, Chicago, women in the Chicago area had gone missing and the predator who was caught and incarcerated, referred to as the thief, is about to be released. And um, essentially, she, her father had some connection to this man, was involved in representing him, and she's now getting pulled into that. So it is a beautiful introduction to this character, first of all, who continues into the second book that I loved, um, The Suicide House by Charlie Don Lee. Um, and then you also get um, an, just a really interesting look back at understanding a little bit about her background, her relationship with her father, and then the history of this case um, also unfolds. So it's a little bit of that past and present, and it's just weaving together so well. I did not want to put this book down. This was an engaging book. It was easy to read. Um, this is another one that's good for like if you're going up to the cabin or a lake house or a, be a bed and breakfast or Airbnb and you're looking for something <laughs> or you just want to stay home and read all weekend. This is a good one. Um, it's a really good just sit down and go right on through the story. I love, love, love her character. I can't wait to read more. Um, so that is it. As always, thank you for participating with me on this literary journey. Um, let me know if you choose to read any of the books below. I always get excited when I hear. And if you do, even if you don't like them or you love them and I didn't like them, I don't. I love hearing everyone's experiences. So please do share. Um, and that is it. Let's go read some books. Happy reading.